dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is now 6 a.m. on June 20th. Now let's check in with meteorologist Shane Smith for a look at your forecast this morning. Now we said this earlier, we can't expect some rain today, so if you're heading out to work, probably grab an umbrella, grab a rain jacket. It can't be a bad idea. Definitely a good idea to have those as we are going to be tracking showers off and on throughout the day. Already watching a few on pinpoint Doppler this morning, Olivia, and we can take a look at that right now. You can see the heaviest of the action just to the southwest of Jackson over into portions of uh, Owsley and Breathitt County. Uh, there near Cow Creek and Canoe. That's also extending into the northern end of Clay County. That will be pushing up towards Boonville here in the next little bit. Also some light shower action over into portions of Wayne and McCreary counties near Whitley City, extending over towards Monticello. All as an area of low pressure continues to sit and spin right on top of the bluegrass. We're actually going to zoom this out a little bit and you can see that heavier rain starting to develop down into the Carolinas and Virginia. Virginia. That's going to wrap back around that low. That's the rain that will be impacting us as we go into the afternoon today. Visibility also an issue this morning for some of us uh, from Hazard down to Harlan. We're running one mile visibility. You can see as we take a look outside the WYMT studio, that fog is quite thick uh, through portions of Perry, Leslie, uh, Harlan counties and Letcher County. So uh, just know you may want to take it easy out there as that fog uh, could definitely slow things down. We're into the mid 60s for most of us this morning, heading into the upper 70s this afternoon. And uh, be sure to grab that umbrella as you head out the door because rounds of storms. That's the name of the game, not just today, but the next several days. We'll take a look at that extended forecast here in just a few minutes, Olivia. All right, thank you. A weekend death in the Martin area has a community shaken and a family demanding justice. As WYMT's Buddy Forbes reports, police say foul play is involved. Amber Spradlin's early years were filled with heartache and tragedy. Her mother was murdered in 1989 when she was about two or three years old and her sister died in a car wreck in 1996, a, a freak accident on Route 80, and uh, it's just kind of a sad life. Yeah. Raised by her grandparents, the 39-year-old cat mom and concert lover put her heart into caregiving, looking out for her family and friends. <laughs> Everybody always talked about how sweet Amber was, and uh, helpful and nice and that she was always willing to help them when they needed something. But with recent life changes and a new job, the self-proclaimed world traveler was on a new journey, learning to care for herself. So she was just kind of spreading her wings and getting started. Sunday that journey was cut short when Spradlin died in a home on Arkansas Creek, leaving Kentucky State Police to investigate her murder. It was like a dagger through the heart. It just wasn't fair. She was just, just learning to take care of herself and to be her own person. As her loved ones search for support, asking for answers. She was kind. She was kind to everyone. They say her spirit of compassion and care will always be louder than the silence of waiting. But she knew it didn't matter what she did to me. I'd always love her. Yeah. And I didn't. And go to the ends of the earth for her too. Yeah. And I didn't. In life and in death. Yes. And they will honor her life by finding out the truth about her death. In Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. A Facebook page, Justice for Amber, has already seen community support in the hours since it was created. The family says they are thankful for the work being done by Kentucky State Police to find the answers. One man is dead after an officer-involved shooting in Louisville yesterday. The investigation is taking place in the Portland neighborhood. LMPD has set up a staging area at nearby Shawnee Baptist Church. When officers were trying to arrest their initial suspect, another person tried to carjack an officer with a gun. One of the officers shot the person with their service weapon and began life-saving measures. The person was taken to U L Hospital where he later died. LMPD's chief said he was a white man in his 20s. 
Also in Louisville, LMPD have arrested a man for a deadly shooting there this past weekend. 43 year old Delane Nolan was arraigned yesterday for murder and tampering with evidence. He's accused of killing a man Saturday night on South 3rd Street in the Wilder Park neighborhood. Police say Nolan admitted to getting into an argument with the victim and pulling a gun from his pocket just before it went off. The victim died at, at the University of Louisville Hospital. The coroner has not released his name. Nolan is in jail on a $100,000 bond. He is expected to be back in court June 27th. Many shootings were reported across the state this past weekend. Four murder suicides logged nationwide, including two here in the Commonwealth. On Friday, four people were found dead inside a home in Breathitt County, including the suspected shooter. Kentucky State Police are also investigating a murder-suicide on Saturday in Harding County, where they believe a husband shot and killed his wife before turning the gun on himself. Kelsey Soto talks with domestic gun violence experts about the trends they are seeing. It leaves me speechless. I just, over 33 years, it just continues to get worse and worse. It never gets easier for Darlene Thomas. It's families, it's neighbors, it's innocent bystanders. She's been working with domestic violence survivors for more than three decades, but tells me a recent uptick in violent domestic crime has her concerned. I keep going, when is it going to slow down? Like, I, I wait for the brakes to be applied a little bit, but it's... Um, it doesn't feel like it's slowing down. Just last week, three children were among the six found dead in a house fire in Tennessee. Investigators believe the victims were all shot before flames ever flickered. The suspect identified amongst the dead. Previously, we would have uh, the perpetrator and the victim, and now we're having perpetrator and victim, 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 sometimes up to eight. Last year, 670 murder suicides were reported nationwide, the highest number seen in the past seven years using data from the gun violence archives. 315 have already been recorded this year. Mark Bryant has been tracking those numbers from right here in central Kentucky. It really boils down to anger plus gun uh, or alcohol plus gun or uh, zealotry plus gun uh, with one common factor in all of that. Darlene wants people to know that emergency protective orders can serve a valuable purpose but may not work in every situation. She encourages anyone who feels unsafe to give them a call before it's too late so they can help find available resources and solutions. That was Kelsey Soto reporting. Thomas says it is a common misconception that you have to come in to a shelter, but that is not always the case. They have options and other avenues for keeping victims safe. McGoffin County High School will offer grief counselors after the death of a 16 year old Saturday. Officials say Sam Wagers, a student there, died after drowning in Paintsville Lake. Word quickly spread through social media of what had happened. Sam was called Sambo by his friends. Principal Brian Conley says he had a bright future ahead of him. He was just one of those students who could just brighten your day. He was fun to have around. In seven years, McGoffin County High School has dealt with student deaths about half a dozen times. Many of them were the result of accidents. Funeral services are set for 1 p.m. Saturday at Ivington Baptist Church and visitation services will start there at 6 on Friday evening. Kentucky State Police troopers past and present came together in Frankfurt to celebrate 75 years. Jeremy Toms gives us a look back at some of the agency's history and how it has changed in the years since it formed. On July 1st of 1948, Governor Earl Clements signed off on an act that established the Kentucky State Police. With the stroke of a pen, Kentucky became the 38th state to have a statewide police organization. Some who were within the crowd and taking in the agency's history represented its future. Cadet Class 103, the largest class in nearly a decade, they received some words of wisdom from past troopers along the way. A lot riding on you all's shoulders and a lot of people who are looking over your shoulders. So continue to look forward. Don't look back. While these troopers say their core values haven't wavered over the past three quarters of a century, they have seen this agency evolve. But some change is inevitable. Retired Colonel Linda Mayberry is the highest ranking female official in KSP history. 
She remembers a time when the makeup of this agency was much different. When I joined the KSP, there were only a few police women, most of whom were in larger metropolitan police departments. And in the late 1970s, Kentucky only had one woman trooper. But with 31 active woman troopers and over 400 female civilian personnel now, she welcomes the changes KSP has made and looks forward to what the next 75 years hold. In Frankfurt, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. It is 610 now on Mountain News this morning, and we're tracking a little bit of rain across the mountains. Check it out as we zoom in pinpoint Doppler just to the southwest of Jackson. Decent little cell moving through portions of Owsley County right now. That's heading up into Lee County over the next little bit, and that will continue to bring more rain to the region. And we're also seeing cooler temperatures today. As we take a look at temperatures uh, through the afternoon, you're noticing we're only topping out around 77. That's because the clouds are going to be thick today and we're going to see several rounds of showers and storms develop. Notice uh, this high resolution uh, version of future view showing some pretty potent storms potentially this evening down in the Cumberland Valley. That's something we'll keep a close eye on uh, and it could drop anywhere from a quick half inch to inch of rain. And it's not just rain today in the forecast. We got several more chances coming up. We'll talk about that here in just a few minutes, Olivia. All right, thank you, Shane. And thanks for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, a submarine that went to explore the remains of the Titanic is still missing. We'll tell you about the search for the passengers who were on board when we come back.